If you remember from the last video, we moved the part to the chuck because we had um, concentricity and run out issues on the steady rest because of the shape of the part. So here's the first tool just facing off the. There's about a hundred thousandths of stock left on the part to be faced there. And then it's going to turn the OD, rough turn the OD. It's facing in that orientation because if I do it the other way, I, I could hit the face of the spindle on the chuck jaws. I'm up close when I'm facing the part. So here's the finished turning OD. After I index the insert, I'm going to rough the thread relief first with this tool and then uh, take the initial cut on the OD. I usually offset these tools out a little bit on this kind of a part and check the diameter and then set the offset in and rerun the tool. It's because this is expensive material and I don't want to take the risk of something cutting the wrong size because I have to index the insert every part to get the size. So here's the second cut on the OD. That pin end of the part's going to have a um, acne thread and 8 pitch stub acne thread on it. Here's a spot drill, just a spot for three holes in the face of the part. One half inch hole in, in around about the middle and then one start hole for the 5 16th gun drill and the other side has a it's going to have a kind of a I don't know it's a guide hole for a half inch pin I believe. I'm just checking the tip of the drill there make sure it's alright. Drill part of the way in because this hole goes in pretty deep and I can't the flute length of that drill isn't quite long enough to make it. Here's the 5 16 drill for the start hole for the 5 16 gun drill which I'm putting in here now touching it off this is the first of many gun drills to drill this hole because it's 18.8 inches deep into the part. But I have to drill it here to begin with because I have other tools that are going to go in the beginning of this hole right now. And then I'm going to come back later and finish that hole at the end of the program. This is a 495 drill in preparation for the half inch form tool that's going to go in that hole. It's kind of a form reamer that I ground on my grinder. You may have saw a photo of those drills. I reground them on Instagram that I posted. This is the first roughing tool. It's going to rough the counterbore in the end of the part. And this counterbore goes about, I think it's 5 8 deep into the part. And it gives me just enough room to finish that half inch hole later on as well. So this is just roughing out the counter bore kind of in a spiral roughing cycle. So there's the three holes in the end of the part. Now we're going to spot drill for the, we're going to drill with a small gun drill to form the corners of the pocket that's down deep in there. And so that's the spot drill for the starting drill for the gun drill. This is a 177 thousandths diameter gun drill. That's what I used here to form the corners of the pocket down there. So those are the start holes. And here's the first gun drill. Now I wasn't uh, real happy with the tip of this gun drill when I put it in there, but I said, well, it'll probably work. And, and this is kind of a mistake to think in these terms when you're machining something. If you think something's not going to work, you should stop and change it. But you'll see the reason why here in a second. If you watch carefully and listen and look at the way the coolant's coming out of that hole, you can see the minute it changes right there. And I'm going to run this in a slower speed. You could hear it if you listen carefully. And that's when it broke the tip of that gun drill. It just broke it off of there. Uh, now gun drills are kind of nice because you can always, almost always get what remains in the hole out of there. With a twist drill this might be very difficult. If it's a carbide twist, twist drill it might be impossible. But it turns out that the coolant blew the tip of that gun drill out of there. It's the new drill and that's a new drill and what it should look like. 
I'm going to finish the hole down to depth. It's going about three and three eighths deep into the part. I'm going to stop it and check it to make sure there's not, it didn't get damaged or something finishing that hole. And it looked all right, so I'm going to run it the next hole. And then we come in with a flat tip gun drill to just to flat bottom those holes so they match the flat surface of the bottom of the pocket. Here's the second half inch roughing end mill, the short one. And it's going to go in and finish. A, a, there's a bore in the end of the part that's a 1.1 inches in diameter, the finished size. This is going to rough that in. It goes another one inch deeper than the bottom of the counter bore. It also has some features that are, are the corners of the pocket below it in the sides of the bore. So you can't just bore it in there. You have to kind of mill it a little bit. You can see it if you look carefully. So there's two bumps in the bore there and the two little gun drilled holes that are going to form the corners of the pocket and the half inch hole in the middle, which now I can come in and finish to depth. You see how close the collet chuck came to the part. Here's the first half inch roughing end mill. This is a, a short cut length with a reduced shank tool. So I'm just putting a new one in there because it takes a new one for every part. This, this tool takes kind of a lot of abuse roughing that deep pocket in there. It's going almost uh, three and three eighths deep into the part. So this is just a roughing cycle, kind of a, I don't know, a trichoidal type of milling cycle on the face of the part. And then we come in with a 3 8 end mill here, an extended length one to rough out. The, the end of the gun drill hole has some features that are going to be formed with a form tool later, and it's just roughing those out there. And here's the finished boring bar to bore the bores to size. It, it bores the bigger bore and then faces and bores the smaller one below it. It, it actually has to be run a number of times, but I'm not showing it here. I'm going to check it with a dial bore gauge, make sure it's to the size I want, and then, then i got to check to see if my plug for the next operation fits in it properly. It just seems pretty good, so I'm happy with that. And here's uh, the next this is kind of a, it's roughing these notches in the face of the counterboard down below. Then here again, another trochoidal milling cycle. And then here's the tool that finishes those. Just two three-eighths end mills actually is what's doing this. Kind of hard to see with all the coolant, but this is, you see the little notches in the side of the bore, that's what that was doing as well as a little bit more roughing down below in that one inch um, roughing and finishing I should say and here's a um, tool that's roughing a little bit more down in that bottom hole the bottom pocket down there kind of see how the, how the gun drills forms the corners of the holes but see there's still a little bit of metal left Got to come in and this is a second tool that finishes the walls. It's a 3 8 end mill with the, I've ground the, the neck even longer so it can reach down to the bottom of that pocket. Put a new one in every part again. The sink canal wears the tools out on every part. Particularly these long tools that, you know, are, aren't as rigid. So that's finishing down to the bottom of that pocket on the walls, but then 
the corners still there's me checking the width of the of the pocket down there but the corners still have to be there's still a little bit of material that the 3 8 end mill left and this is what I had to mill with a five axis setup now this setup I'm gonna change here this view is of the setup part in the steady rest but I couldn't get any pictures because of all the coolant with the you know on the part in the chuck so I, I put these in the video you can kinda of see the movement there it's kinda of tracing around the corner just to get it, the material out of the corners this kind of um, strategy I guess you might say of, of milling you you set a point in space and the the tool shank can't deviate from that point but it can move all the other axes to get the tool to the work so you can make sure that it's not going to hit your part with the shank of the tool and this little tool the, this is a 32nd inch ball nosed end mill I'm not showing you every single pass of this tool this is also again in the setup part so I could show you the motion and it's taking what the eighth inch ball end mill couldn't get at the very bottom of the pocket in the corner there but you can kind of see the motion of that where there's a point in space and the tools pivoting around that point in space uh, up in the front of the bore so that's the finished corners I had to kind of zoom in there sorry about the graininess but and there's not a lot of light for this little uh, GoPro camera in there. So this tool is just forming some little, it's a quarter inch end mill. It's forming the, the, those little shallow recesses in the face of the counter bore there. Now here I'm going to check the run out just to be sure that I'm on center line because the, the two form tools that are go into those um, holes that I rough milled this would be that half inch one it's kind of like a half inch reamer form tool have to be on a, a close concentricity to the part so I'm just double check the run out there with the dial indicator so that that tool just forms some kind of notches in the corner on the sides I guess you say of that half inch reamed hole it's the threading tool for the Acme thread. Got to index the insert, put it back in, and run the thread. Actually, threading in this material doesn't seem to give you too much trouble for some reason. And you don't have, of course, any trouble with getting a nice finish or anything. So I'm going to check the depth of the thread seems like it's where I want it but I'm going to double check it with some thread wires just to make sure here's that um, form tool to form the it's kind of some steps in the counter board but they got a close tolerance on the on one of them in front of the gun drill hole and actually I have to have that hole in there because when I gun drill I'm at the end of the flutes of the gun drill. That just forms some little chamfers on the half inch hole. It's, here's the thread blunt start tool. The way this specified on this part, you have to have this small radius on this blunt start, so I had to use a 332nd end mill. So that's what it looked like when it was done. And here's the the remaining gun drills for the 5 16 hole that goes 18.8 inches deep. And it takes, I thought I could drill this and go 4 inches deep per pass, but it turned out I couldn't do that. The drill would fail. So I, I only could go 2 inches at a time. So it takes 8 more drills to get down there to the final depth. So here's... I'm not showing you touching off every tool, I'm just showing you the all the tools. So you start with a, a a shorter drill and then go to a longer drill and keep going down until you get to the depth.
I think this is the final one here. So that's the part. See, there's the, sometimes those drills chip like that. And you have to grind all the way back beyond that chip. So here's a few images of the finished operation on the part. That's the thread blunt start close up. That's the corner that we machine with the five axis movements. And the two holes that have the close tolerance form tools. And the 18.8 inch deep 5 16 hole. I put a light at the end of it so you could see down the hole. So thanks for watching, and uh, to all those that this is the first time you've seen one, one of my videos, uh, please subscribe.